Hi, this is Sam Botstein from MachineSkills.com. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all our machine tutorials and check us out at MachineSkills.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to use beat delay in sequencing drum beats. It's very powerful and flexible. It's a lot easier to use in live performance than, say, just live sequencing lots of intricate things. And it works really well if your basic sequence is sparse. So here I'm using this Artcore kit from a popular machine expansion from Native Instruments. And at first, one would think that the drums are really not what's for sale in this particular expansion or even in just in this kit. You'll notice that we have these two big pads and this noise going on the whole time. And you can check out our other sites and our other tutorials on YouTube for how to make those kinds of sounds with different synthesizers. But what's really interesting is exactly the way this little pattern works. It looks really simple, but in fact, there's a couple of really small, really powerful things going on that we can build on and use to make lots of really interesting beats and do so quickly and easily. So here's what this kit sounds like. I've mixed down all the stuff at the bottom a little bit in the mixer view, just so we can hear the drums a little more clearly, even in context. So you'll notice that this rings out for a really long time, and part of this sort of futuristic downbeat aesthetic, you know, sort of beat scene kind of stuff, is that uh, there's a lot of reverb going on and a lot of delay going on. So I'm not really going to talk about reverb a lot today, but pretty much all of these sounds have a reverb on them. Some of them have different kinds of reverb, you know, this one has ice and, you know, this one has reflex, but basically everything's got a reverb on it. And then on the group, which is uh, also important, there's a compressor and also a transient master and also a maximizer. And that sort of uh, sort of compresses the sins. Instead of confessing the sins, it compresses them and sort of lets us get away with all sorts of weird mixing problems, all sorts of mess from all these reverbs. What I'm going to focus on today is the really interesting beat delay that's going on here. So if we mute these things and we just hear the drums, So you can hear that hi-hat ringing out, and you can also hear that what is being heard is not what is visibly sequenced here. We're basically hearing this closed hi-hat on every beat after it comes in right there. And the reason for that is that there's this beat delay going on, and it has really high feedback, really high crossover. It's stereo, so that's why you'll, you'll see it going back and forth in the VU meter and hear it on your left and your right. And uh, the mix, though not really high up, leaves us at such a place that we can sequence it just where we need it and we'll actually kind of miss it or at least make a sort of an empty kind of feeling if we were to leave one of these out. So let's A, B that. First I'm going to play it just the way it was, just for example, and then I'm going to take out this third beat and we can hear the difference. So this can be really powerful. If you were working with a MC or a rapper or any kind of vocalist or something, maybe just playing with another instrument, this could actually be really useful. Just by taking out one individual note here, we're actually taking out quite a bit of sound. Uh, the other thing that's really cool about using this beat delay for sequencing is that in a live performance situation, it's really straightforward to go from 16th to 30 seconds or you know anything like that as opposed to trying to frantically put those all into the step sequencer or switch really rapidly between different patterns you know it's a really cool live performance option that i hadn't really considered for sequencing so if we were to take this delay time parameter and map it to one of the macros on this group which i think i've already done here yes um, it's really easy to do. Essentially, all you need to do is click on one of these slots and then select the appropriate sound. 
which would be our second closed hi-hat, and then beat delay, and then main, and then time. We already had that though, so um, this doesn't really do us a lot of good. We're going to use this other macro um, for another sound a little bit later in the tutorial. But one really cool thing about the way that this beat delay is set up is that we can really easily change the rhythm just by turning one of our knobs on our machine controller or pressing one tiny little arrow. It's going to really change the feel up. So check this out. So one nice thing about this is that it's never a sudden or jarring change. We're going to hear the rhythm ring out for a long time, even after we press stop on our controller. So when you're going from 30 seconds to 16ths, you're still going to hear the 30 seconds for a little while while it fades back and forth. This lets you get away with a lot. You can sort of change this and you don't really have to worry about it being in rhythm, it's going to be in rhythm for you. It's very low risk. You know, a lot of people are afraid to do sort of Jeremy Ellis or Arab music style finger drumming. This is a really easy way to perform live with the machine and have it be a very low risk kind of proposition. Now, let's take a little bit of a look at the interaction between these different hi-hat sounds. So a few of you might have already noticed that the velocities are a little bit higher on the strong beats 1, 2, 3, and 4, and on these little e andas here, um, they're actually a little bit softer. You can see that uh, when I select it, it's very clear that they have this sort of topology here where they're strong on the main beat, and then on the and they're a little bit less strong, and then they're equally not strong. Well, actually, it looks like, like they're 43 and 46, but pretty far down on the offbeats. So let's just hear that alone. This is a very natural sounding hi-hat sound, and uh, this particular velocity pattern is very common even way back to the MPC days. In fact, in Ableton Live, if you use the groove pool and the uh, MPC effects, a lot of them are going to end up looking just like this. So this is really a good idea, but what if we went ahead and extended the sort of beat delay idea to this other hi-hat. We can do this by going into our plugin section and then the sound, and then adding, let's say, a grain delay. So this won't necessarily be in time, but what we can do is we can map some of its parameters to a macro, and that way we'll be able to take it in and out and we'll be able to build up and break down our various sounds. So just to check, we have this at 32. Let's bring it down to 16. We're going to hop back to this hi-hat sound and we're going to turn on grain delay. I am going to turn up the pitch a little bit, the size up to about here, the space quite a bit, the mix quite a bit, and I'm going to turn it to reverse. And so this is what it sounds like. So this is actually introducing quite a bit of tension into something that was very, very peaceful before we got putting effects on it. So if I bring back this other stuff that came with the group, we'll sort of hear what this is like in action. Now, of course, this can be kind of a mess. You probably don't want to in introduce the beat just like this, you probably want to bring this in. So we can do that with automation. We can you know, automate these various parameters or we can assign them to macros. That's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna sort of leave everything the way it was. Maybe bring up this pitch a little bit and just map the mix to a macro. So if we hop into our group macros, we select this other hi-hat sound uh, and then the grain delay and then main and then mix, we have two controls for each of our hats, and uh, well, rather one control for each of our hats, two total, and this will allow us to really simply and easily make different kind of grooves and effects and sounds with just two of our knobs in our machine controller.
So on one hand, this is a sort of really subtle and odd way to do all, do all your sequencing. But on the other hand, it gives us a lot of flexibility. As opposed to sort of committing something to audio right away, we have all of these different controls to make different sort of topologies, soundscapes, whatever you want to call it, out of a really simple little sequence. So the things that are really important to remember here are that we're emphasizing the strong beats using this velocity pattern and also putting the um, other hi-hat where it is as opposed to say here. If we were to put, put it on you know, these sort of weaker beats, it's gonna turn into a horrible mess really quickly. Um, here I have double what we ordinarily had. I'm just gonna do like a regular amount on the second bar. Um, but you'll be able to see that it, it, it uh, doesn't go so well uh, the minute we start messing with the overall rhythm. Because we have such a slow, relaxed tempo, and because these big pads and noise sounds are really taking up a lot of the mix, it sort of gets lost as to where you know, the big bar is, the where the big one is until we hear that kick. So it's really important to remember the way that we had things. We have this strong velocity on the strong beats, and on the ands we have this sort of repeating beat delay sound. Let me know if this fits in well to your productions and if you're using this already. Let me know if you make any beats using this, and make sure to check us out at machineskills.com and subscribe to us on YouTube for all our machine tutorials.